Okay, so you're telling me if I just type in the name of the function like dupes from array to remove the duplicates and tab over, it completes the function. Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today I'm looking at the technical preview of GitHub Copilot. It's an artificially intelligent programming partner that will give you code suggestions. And while there are several videos about Copilot, I wanted to provide one that is focused on the impact this will have for my students and other students around the world, as well as how this will impact educators. Let's get started by having Copilot help us with some standard code problems. Okay, I've got Visual Studio Code on the left, and I've got the Chrome Dev Tools console on the right. We've got this function here that GitHub Copilot created just by me typing in the name of the function. GitHub Copilot uses AI and it uses context. So just it gathered the context from me typing in a descriptive name. Now notice it's down here in the bar and I can click the little icon to disable Copilot globally. Or likewise, if I did disable it, now it's red. I can click to activate it globally. So we've got that. Now let's go ahead and test this function out that it created and I need an array to do that. So I'll just define my array and let's see what GitHub Copilot suggests for that. It suggests an array with 10 numbers right away. But let's go ahead and put in some duplicates. So two, oops, I need a comma, two and three. And now we've got an array with a couple of duplicates and now let's go ahead and log to the console the results of this. So we say remove dupes from my array. It already knows what I want in the console log statement. So now let's save. And we get an array with just one, two, three, four. That's exactly what we needed. So this worked out great. Let's try another function. I'll delete all of this. And let's get one that checks the number of occurrences in a string. So let's call that get occurrences from string. And notice it instantly filled in, I hit tab right here. So it filled in what I needed for parameters, string and substring, and went right to the end of the line. And now it wants to suggest the rest of this. And this might work okay, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I can do a couple of things. One, on Windows, I can press Alt and the right bracket and I believe on Mac it would be option. But here we go, Alt in the right bracket and see if there's any other code suggestions here. It's not giving me others now. So I'm not getting quite what I want, so I can press Control Enter and now it's going to give me several suggestions. I'll drag this over so we can see it better and then we can click to accept the solution if we want to. And I'm not seeing what I want yet, so let's just keep looking a little bit maybe something that uses a regex with that substring. And let's see what we've got to look for here. Quite a few suggestions at least. Not exactly what I want, so maybe I need to rename my function. So get occurrences from string, not quite what I want. Let's see if I can select that whole line here. Just bring this back and I wanna get occurrences. There it says, string and substring also. So let's see what suggested this. No, very much the same. I'm going to hit Alt and see if I get another suggestion or two here. And I'm going through the suggestions. Not that these would or wouldn't work. Remember, GitHub Copilot synthesizes all the public data in GitHub. So really it's pulling different suggestions there. And I think I've arrowed through everything that could possibly be. What I was looking for was something a little bit different. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can return and then a string. Oh, now GitHub Copilot wants to help with what I need. So I'm going to go ahead and tab and then press Alt Z so the code will wrap and you can see the rest. See, we're getting the length at the end. So we're using a match and a regex expression, which is what I wanted to do with substring. It's a global match. So it's either going to have that match or it's going to be an empty array with the short circuit here. And then we get the length. And then after that, GitHub Copilot suggests just closing out the function. Okay, so now we need a string. So let's go ahead and create my string. Set this equal to 
Hello, Dave. I'm Dave from the planet Dave. There we go. So we needed some repeat occurrences. That's what I want. Okay, now substring is going to equal Dave. GitHub Copilot kind of knows what I want from there. So now let's console log and GitHub Copilot knows I want to call get occurrences and pass in my string and my substring. So let's save. And we get a count of three because there are three Daves in my string. All right, let's do one more common code problem, but I think you're seeing a pattern here. So I'm going to say const is palindrome. Very common problem. That's not exactly the answer I'm looking for. It looks like it might work. So I'm going to press Alt and the bracket key. See if I can get any other suggestions. I'm not, so I'm going to press Control Enter. See if I can go through this file and find a suggestion that I want. And this is much more like what I wanted here, a one line solution. So I'll accept that. And now let's see if it's really what I want afterwards. So let's save this much. And now I'll say console.log and is palindrome madam? Huh, that's an interesting one. We'll also say is palindrome Taco Cat with a capital C. Now let's save. So we've got a true and a false. Well, I wanted my function to check for a palindrome regardless of uppercase or lowercase. So I would do this just a little bit different. I would have string dot to, oh, I put upper, I would do it to lowercase. I suppose it would work either way. And now here, I would also have to put to lowercase which is also chainable, I'd save, and now I've got true and true. But likewise, if we tested something we know is not a palindrome like Walt and save, yep, that's false. So really we got a function that worked. We just still had to tweak it a little bit to get what we wanted. And that's because it's co-pilot. It's not the pilot. You're still in charge. You may not get the exact result, but it's going to synthesize something from all the data that it's gathered, and it's going to be fairly close from what I'm seeing. So I'm a full-time developer and part-time university instructor and adjunct right now. And what I see as a developer, I really like. It is helping fill in with suggestions. Now, as an instructor, I worry that students may rely too heavily on this, but that's up to the student. They can really only cheat themselves. But let's also look at how I outline code exercises and how this may hurt the format that I use. Okay, we can select all and delete this. And another talent that GitHub Copilot has is gathering meaning from code comments. So we're going to use eloquent JavaScript and there are some challenges at the end of the different chapters in Eloquent JavaScript. Now, that, I'm sorry, that's bright, I know. This is at the end of chapter two of Eloquent JavaScript that's available at eloquentjavascript.net, a book that I highly recommend to my students. And looping a triangle is the first challenge. It says write a loop that makes seven calls to console log and output the following. So let's just copy this much. And now I'll minimize that for now. And I guess what we need now is to go back to Visual Studio Code. Got the empty one there. There we go. And I need to start a comment. So I'll do that. And then we'll just paste all of that in and in the comment. Now let's see what we can do here with Copilot. So I'll start with a let. And no, hash equals pound sign is not what we need. I'm going to say I. From there, equals zero is correct. Oh look, Copilot now knows that I need a while loop that while i is less than seven. So let's go ahead and accept. And now look at the suggestion. I'm going to press tab and I'm going to save. And we got exactly what we needed that quickly. So once again, as a student, you could cheat yourself by using GitHub Copilot, but you really need these challenges to become better at what you do if you really like to code. You should not press the easy button. You should go ahead and disable Copilot to learn. But let's go ahead and do the rest of the challenges that are now available there at Eloquent JavaScript. So I'll pull that page back up and let's get the next one 
Fizz buzz. That is a classic challenge that has been around for a while. I'll copy these two paragraphs, not the title. And now let's go back and here we are. Oh, and then we need the other version of Chrome up here. So there we go. Now I'll go back to Visual Studio Code. Too many windows. And I'll select everything here. And now let's do a comment again and paste in the instructions. Okay, so write a program that uses console log to print all the numbers from 1 to 100 with two exceptions. For the numbers divisible by 3, print fizz instead of the number, and for the numbers divisible by 5 and not 3, print buzz. And after you have that working, modify the program to print fizz buzz for the numbers that are divisible by both 3 and 5. So, okay, let's do that. We'll start out with a 4. And now let's see what we got. Right after the 4, I'll press tab, and this looks like it's going to be accurate, although we've got a lot of if-elses here. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and save this and see what we get. It actually worked just fine. So we've got buzz at 100, fizz here, but at 90, we should have fizz buzz. 90 is dividable by both. 95 just by 5, 96 just by 3. Everything's working as it should. Maybe we would want to go in and refactor, but I think this works all right. The main takeaway here is if you were to use GitHub Copilot and accept something, don't simply go to the next. Work your way through and understand how this code works. Understand what the modulus operator is doing here. Understand what the double ampersands are doing. Understand why the if statement stops here. And then of course the next step and the next step. And then of course even the final step. You wanna understand each piece and not share. And clearly this is using some code that I wouldn't. It has a var. I would switch this to a let, for example, if I were writing it. Um, other than that, I don't see anything I would refactor immediately. But nevertheless, you want to understand every line of code before you would accept that and use it in a project or turn it in for an assignment or anything else. The key is understanding. Then you're not cheating yourself. Okay, let's go to the last problem from the Eloquent JavaScript chapter. And let's see what we've got here. Chessboard. Oh, this is an interesting one now because you need lines for the chessboard, and then of course each square in the chessboard, and it alternates between the hashtag and empty. So let's just copy all of this down. And now let's go back to what we had. So we've got our console there, and we've got Visual Studio Code pulling up here. I'm going to select everything once again, put in a comment, paste this in, and now let's see what we can do with the chessboard. So we need to start out saying something like, we could even say, yep, size equals eight. Instantly, GitHub Copilot knows what we want. It says, write a program that creates a string that represents an eight by eight grid while new line, using new line characters to separate the lines. And at each position of the grid, there should be a space or a hashtag character, and the characters should form a chessboard. Passing this string to the console log should show a result like this. Here's our chessboard. So there we go. I'm going to scroll up to get some room. We come down to the next line. Copilot knows we need board to be an empty string. Now let's see if it knows what to do. Not yet. So we do need some knowledge here. And now it jumped to the conclusion for the rest. Let's see if this is accurate here. I'm not so sure. Definitely not accurate. So that's one reason to not just blindly accept the code from GitHub Copilot. We've got some issues here. So let's get rid of all of that again. And let's go ahead and see if there's another suggestion. We're not getting another suggestion. Let's black this out. And now let's get a suggestion. Oh, if we press Alt or what would be Option and the slash, then Copilot should know to give a suggestion. But it's not giving any right now. So let's go ahead and start our for loop. And we want to say let i equal zero. There we're seeing something a little bit better. Let's go ahead and accept that. 
And now let's save. Of course, we still need to console log board as it knows. And there we've got our chessboard, that simple. Now we could refactor this. I don't like this exactly the way it is. I would use a ternary right here. But you need to break down the code and understand what's going on. You've got a for loop that really represents each row. So maybe we should have named size row. But then your next inner for loop is representing each square. So it goes through eight times as well. It's an eight by eight board. And then here we have our decision whether to make it a space or a hashtag. So we could really make this decision a ternary statement. So let's go ahead and refactor that for that reason. And we would give this, this is our conditional. And then after our conditional, we would have, oh, Copilot wants to help us with the rest of the ternary statements. So that even works there. And then we can get rid of this. And let's save again. We still have our chessboard. Much better refactor on that as well. So that's the gist of using GitHub Copilot. And of course, these are problems that have been around. And so I am sure that Copilot could gather more data and give some suggestions on these. Eloquent JavaScript's a very well-known book, for example. But at the same time, this is how I give instructions. And I have my students use GitHub and I put instructions in the comments. And I use unit tests to automatically grade some practice exercises. So I require that function name to be the same. So when they use that identical function name and they have stored several semesters worth of students actually have stored those problems in GitHub, I have a feeling Copilot would be pretty accurate with the assignments I give. So it comes back to the same thing that Free Code Camp suggests. Use academic integrity, challenge yourself, and don't push the easy button down here. You want to disable and you, if you have Copilot installed at some point as a student, you don't want to use it for your assignments. You want to challenge yourself and get better. I think Copilot is a great thing. I think it's going to help me be faster at my job. And at the same time, I think as a student, especially when you are under pressure and you've got a lot of assignments due, probably not just my class or your computer science instructor's class, I think it could be very tempting to push this easy button down here. But what you want to do is give yourself time and learn and challenge yourself to become a better programmer. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.